installing core boot on a ThinkPad X220. A few required items. I used a Raspberry Pi Model B. Any Raspberry Pi will work, although the pinouts may be different. You're going to need six jumper wires to connect the Pi to the SOIC test clip. I used a cheap $2 Chinese test clip rather than the, uh, the $20 Pomona one. But the Pomona one's probably much better quality. Uh, and there's also a link to a supplemental text guide at the bottom of the video, or at the bottom of the screen. Okay, first off, you're gonna need to enable the SPI interface. You can do that by running raspi config, and then after that, you have to reboot the device. Once it's booted back up, you can go ahead and update the package indexes with, you know, sudo apt update. And then you have to install flash ROM and you just do that through apt. And after that's completed, there's a whole bunch of build dependencies you have to download. They're listed in the text guide. Just go over there, copy and paste them, and just run that command. It's not, it's not worth it to type it all out. After those are installed, you'll clone the core boot git repository. Um, after that, use CD into the new directory and then update the submodules to get uh, the third party things like IFD tool and any blobs. Now you'll need to compile IFD tools, so cd2 IFD tools directory that you just updated from the submodules, and then run make, and then run sudo make install to install it to the whole system. And then optionally, you can clone the ME cleaner repo to get rid of the Intel management engine, which is highly recommended. After all that, turn off and unplug the Raspberry Pi. Okay, so now I wanna find out which one of these is red. So I'm going to use a multimeter. Here I was checking to make sure the Chinese clips wires had continuity and I was also checking the direction of the clips for where it was supposed to face. Um, I've read reviews that the clips came backwards and I, I don't know, I, it's, good, it's always good to test for yourself. Now I'm just labeling the jumper wires.
uh, be sure to get all of the pins in the correct spots. Don't rush it. You can you can break something. Don't rush. Do not rush. Now I, I'm starting disassembly. Um, I should have removed the battery first, and you definitely should if you're if you're attempting this. So like, make sure the screen is off. It's not plugged in. Remove the battery, then flip it over. Hold the power button to discharge the capacitors or any remaining charge within. Um, you know, disassembly is is a breeze because it's an older ThinkPad. Not really sure why Lenovo is making everything harder for the consumer, but whatever. I think I'm pulling cat hairs out here. I don't know why you said that. The main thing is just to get to the chip that you just need to lift up the keyboard and the palm rest. It's probably a good idea to completely remove them, but as long as something is not going to bump it and knock the chip off the, I mean the clip off the chip, you're fine. The chip is under this electrical tape right underneath the trackpad. I peeled it up using a plastic pry tool from an iFixit meme kit or whatever. Now, once again, make sure the battery is removed and make sure your laptop and the Raspberry Pi are not plugged in whatsoever. And I'd say the hardest part of this whole thing is connecting the clip. It's just, you gotta make sure it's in place. It's, it was so difficult, it kept popping off. And once it's securely in place, then you can plug in your Raspberry Pi. I set an alias for flash ROM here so I wouldn't have to type as much. The alias is in the text guide if you want to use it, but it's completely optional. Now you're going to try to find your flash chip. Uh, multiple flash chips are probably going to pop up like they did here. They should all be the same, but definitely verify that for yourself. Um, I chose the longest one for some reason, but in the end I ended up just... I was just picking whichever ones, and I tested all of them compared to the MD5s. They're all the same. And now just read the chip to test if the connection is okay. And it's good, it's good to run with time so that you can see how long the reads will take. And you could, you know, gauge out how long the whole thing is going to take through that. And then I calculated the MD5 checksums to make sure all the bin files were the same. And now back up your flash 01.bin if all of the checksums are the same, like back it up into multiple spots because that's the that's the stock BIOS. If anything goes wrong, you're gonna need that. Now you'll want to extract the regions from the bin file with IFD tool, and then you want to move the blobs to their correct locations.
And then you can optionally run ME Cleaner on the me.bin file to get rid of the Intel management engine. Once again, highly recommended to do that. Now configure core boot by running make and config. Um, in the text guide, I have all of the settings and options that I chose. Those are you know, pretty good, I guess. And a side note here, I, I ended up moving the core boot files to my main machine. I tried to compile it on the Raspberry Pi, but it took forever. So I put it onto my uh, main desktop and it all, it's, I think it took around like 20 minutes or something, but you're gonna have to install the build dependencies on that machine too. I think I just ran through the entire thing again. Probably should have said that earlier. And if you want to use Windows with CBIOS, you're going to need a, a VGA firmware or just some VGA firmware. You can extract it yourself. I think I have the link in the guide. Um, or you can use the pre-extracted uh, pre binary. Um, I think I put, I think I uploaded that up into the repository as well. And if not, I definitely will. So now just run make to build core boot. If you're on the Raspberry Pi, it's gonna take forever, but if you move it to a faster computer, it might, uh, it'll, it'll be a little bit quicker. So after compiling, just reread the flash chip a few times to make sure the connection is still solid. Um, compare the MD5 checksums and all that good stuff. Then the moment of truth, right? Core boot to the chip. During the, the flash, you're gonna get a message that says erase failed in all capital letters and an exclamation point. It looks scary, but don't panic. I, I think I panicked a little bit during that. I, I ended up looking it up, but it finds a different way to, uh, a different method to erase and it, it all turns out fine, or it should. 
Now, if it says verified and it's successful, you just unplug the Raspberry Pi before removing the clip. Um, if it's not successful, reseat the clip and try to reflash it again. Uh, if it's still not successful, recompile core boot, try again, and just keep trying and trying and trying. If you, if you ever feel down, you can always reflash flash01.bin to get back to the stock box. Uh, I don't know what that was about. Let's apply these changes. Um, doesn't look like the wireless works on in Windows. That's all right. I don't really use Windows. Only for school. Alright, there it is, there's core boot on the X220.